Welcome to Wealth Talk. I am here today, and as you know, Wealth Talk, we like to focus on the aspects of wealth and expand the awareness of our listeners and viewers of this podcast. You know, and we're concentrating on the aspects within the map book, you know, which are for you to create wealth. And we like to have experts and people who are experiencing these different aspects, sharing their life experiences and giving insights on the expansion and understanding of creating wealth. And today we have a very special guest with us, Kathy DeChico. Kathy, welcome to Wealth Talk. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. I'm actually quite flattered. Okay, yeah, for <laughs> sure. You know, you're a very special person. Me and Kathy knowing each other for about three years now, right? Uh, and I think a little longer. A little longer? Four, four years, yeah. four years. But hey, time flies when you're having yeah. a fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but Kathy works with Remax Millennium. She's a full-time real estate agent right and a mother and so much more we're going to get into that but we want to take it back all right kathy i want to go to the very beginning you know if you could share you know where were you born what was life like growing up you know with the listeners okay so i was born in scotland i'm um one of four children we're four girls in a household so you can imagine what my life was like growing up uh, we were a very close family in Scotland. Um, I came here when I was 13 years old, so I did my elementary years in Scotland. Okay. Um, very, very strict school system, very disciplined upbringing. Okay. Um, we, we had fun. You know, we mm. did a lot of things as family. We traveled um, in between Scotland, England, Wales. Okay. We, you know, we traveled a lot as a family small like camping trips and those kind of things nice and then we always visited with uh our grandparents a lot and our cousins so we're very close that way oh nice nice so with your sisters where are you positioned with with so i'm the second youngest okay okay so you're pretty much what like what's this is there like a big age gap between you or no not at all so they call my older two sisters um, Irish twins because they're actually nine months apart. Okay, nice. And then I'm a year um, apart from my next sister okay. and then two years between myself and my younger oh, sister. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so you must yeah. be really close. So we're all very close in age. Nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. So what was it like, like, uh, growing up, four sisters, you're traveling, you're you're going, uh, doing family trips, camping, and what, like you said, school was strict, but, like, what what with your parents like how was that that dynamic and how like what how explain how you went from scotland to coming over here like how like if you could go in more detail with sure. that sure so um my parents both worked okay um my dad was in, he worked in the stamp works which okay. was a big thing back home and um sorry the, just clarification what stamp works is it like it's like um so, well he I don't know exactly what it was. Okay. It's a big, but it's something big it's over a, there. Yeah, it's a big thing over there. I don't even really actually know okay. what it is. Okay, but you know I, that's what he did. I, that's, okay. that's, that's, <laughs> that is, oh, he was at the stamp work. Nice, so, nice, nice. But when, he came, when we came here, he was like um, like a structural engineer. Okay. So it must have had something to do okay, with that. Okay, nice, I'm nice. I'm sure the listeners, maybe some British people will relate and say, <laughs> oh, you bad girl. <laughs> 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 but yeah, he, he was, you know, he was did well in his company. Okay. We, we lived a good life. Nice. We, we lived, a, you know, a nice life. Okay. You know what I mean? We weren't poor mm-hmm. or we weren't super rich, but mm-hmm. we had we had everything we needed. Of course, you're able to travel around and get yeah. to experience, you know, yeah. the, the whole land and everything. That's great. Yeah, and it's so beautiful there. Oh, you nice, know, nice. The, the countryside is just so beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful countries in the world. I can imagine. Is Scotland where they have the, the kilts? Is that? Yeah. Uh, okay, nice, yeah, nice. Yeah. So you got, and uh, is there the bag bagpipes? Yeah. So yeah. So you, you were you were in in all of that like it was so fun there because uh, Sunday mornings like in the summertime they uh-huh. would have like parades on the streets okay so if you heard the bagpipes you're all running outside to see oh when they're coming oh nice and then we were all baton twirlers okay so we were we were part of those parades it would be horses and bagpipe players wow. and then the the dancers and then the baton twirlers mm-hmm. and it was just fun yeah. when you heard that happening yeah then everyone's running outside like to everyone see in town knows yeah, okay it's this like, is like this a party is, going but I they would of... come like literally like right down your street oh nice it wasn't just like queen street Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean it was like on your street like horses and it was it was so fun that way so it sounds like the community was really close yeah yeah Yeah. because everyone's always coming out everybody knew everybody oh nice 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 it was it was very close community okay that's amazing so 
from there, talk about the transition, like from Scotland to Canada. Like, how, how, why did that happen? Why did your parents decide to come to Canada? So I was young. I was only 13 when I came here. Okay. And I didn't know why at the time. Mm -hmm. But the, apparently the country was going into a recession. Okay. And my dad had a friend who had come here. Okay. So he, they planned a vacation. They said, we're going to Canada. We're like, okay, we're going to Canada. So yeah. we came on vacation and we stayed with my uncle mm -hmm. or my dad's friend. We yeah. called him uncle. Mm -hmm. And um, my dad was actually looking for a job. Okay. So he managed to get a job here, mm -hmm. and um, and then six months later, we were living in Canada. Oh, wow. Yeah. So when you guys came for vacation, did you guys like the experience, or it was like... We just thought it was vacation. We didn't know we were moving here, and my uncle said, oh, we're going to go down the street to, to uh, Disneyland. Disneyland? Yeah, we and were like, okay, and... Okay. Like, how long does it take to drive to Florida? Like, 12 hours or something? Okay. Yeah. So, we're like, okay. Well, so you guys went to Disneyland. We, we went to oh. Disneyland. <laughs> and but did he you was think like, was it Canada? Did you, or did you know I, it was it? You didn't we know. didn't know, okay. right? Yeah. He's like, oh, we're going to go down the street. To 12 hours later, we're in Disneyland. We're like, oh, that's <laughs> a little far down the street. Yeah. Scotland's not very big, right? Yeah, okay. You can drive from one end to the other. Oh, for real? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, it's wow. not very big at okay. all. So, we were like, okay. Uh -huh. So, we, I mean, I didn't look at it like, oh, Canada, like, yeah. It was more like we were on vacation. Yeah. So but not knowing in the background, your dad was looking for work, you're saying? Yeah. Oh, wow. So okay. he was interviewing, and he ended up getting a job here. Okay. And like I said, by December, we were new immigrants. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So the whole family came down at, yeah. at one time? Yep. Okay. Yeah. One-way ticket. One-way ticket. Okay. So, okay no, so talk about that, you know, like the experience of going to Scotland, and now you're in Canada, like, uh, explain like your first day coming if you remember oh, it. Oh like. man, I remember it. Okay. The most traumatic time of my life. Oh wow, it was, why? It was so hard for me. So I was 13. Mm -hmm. So when we came here, um, it was snowing. Okay. So first of all, imagine I'm 13 years old. Mm -hmm. My sisters are going to high school. Mm -hmm. They're putting me in grade seven. Okay. And then my other sister is, so I'm in middle school. Okay. And then my little sister is in elementary. Jun like the junior, junior. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm by myself. Oh, wow. My little sister was okay. Uh -huh. My older sisters, they had each other. Yeah. And I was all alone. Oh. And I was terrified. Now, we didn't have snow back home the way we have snow here. Okay. So snow back home, very little. Okay. It's a little more now, but back then it was very little. Uh -huh. So... You know, my uncle's like, oh, it snows a lot here, and, you know, you got to be prepared. So we were, like, literally looked like Eskimos. <laughs> so imagine yeah. grade 7 showing up at school with Eskimo boots and oh. a full-on snowsuit. <laughs> like, hello, let's pick on her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so you're getting teased, And then I she's think, the huh? Scottish girl with the accent. Oh, you had an accent. Of course. Oh, for real? I don't hear no accent. No, I That's lost the... my accent. I got... I lost my accent fairly quickly. Oh, uh, uh, purposely. On purposely. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah, because I didn't, I hated being that girl. Oh, okay. Every time you walk down the hallway at school, oh, there's that girl, let's make her talk. Oh, and yeah? they'd be like, oh, say something. And mm -hmm. it's like, okay, But what was the accent, though? I don't understand. Like, isn't it kind of like Engli English? It's English, but it's with an accent. Give me a little sample. Like, say hello, Richard, or something. Hello there, Richard. Okay. How are you doing this yeah, morning? Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with that accent. I'm familiar with that accent. Yeah. Okay. And so, how did you how did you change your accent? We, I guess you were listening to other students or I, something? Yeah, I mean, we just listened and... Okay. So your sisters, this would it, were they doing the same or they were okay I mean, with I don't their... think it was... I mean, I was... I wanted my accent gone yeah. because I just was like... You wanted to more fit in because now yeah. you're in Canada. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and then so the I, people won't really come to you and yeah. ask you for your accent. And now stuff I like want that. everyone to come and talk to me as a realtor. <laughs> yeah. But back then, yeah. uh, no, I was... You know, yeah, it seemed like teasing, right? Like that's yeah. pretty much what it seemed like to you. Or, or maybe they were curious, but... From they your just perspective, really that's... wanted to hear it. Yeah. Right? Because it's something... To you, it, it didn't make you feel good because I... you didn't feel like you fit in, I think. Yeah, right? exactly. Okay, okay. And the school system was so different. Okay. The school system, like, from... We, we come from a very strict school. I mm. was in high school, like, second year high school back home. Okay. Now I'm in elementary school. We wore uniforms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, very, very disciplined. Like, you don't speak out of line. Um, it's very, very... 
like more advanced than here. Yeah. You know, uh, there's no messing around it in school. Okay. And we were always taught to respect your elders mm -hmm. and you don't speak out of line. Okay. To anyone who's older than you, mm -hmm. you don't speak out of line, okay. period. Yeah. So when I came here, yeah. I go to my homeroom class uh -huh. with my parents in the hallway. Okay. And um, I go into the class, and I'll never forget my homeroom teacher, Mr. Bacchuson. He had like a little painted on mustache and mm. little toupee on his head. And there was like girls on desks and people swearing and it was so oh, wow. disorderly yeah, yeah. he had no control of the classroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and i'm like what is happening uh -huh, here uh -huh. i am so done like yeah. i just i didn't know how to react wow so it was pretty for me it was very traumatic yeah, yeah, yeah. It so was just I, so when you were there like i i think because you you had that foundation of being disciplined so i take it even as a student there even though the atmosphere is like that you still were kind of like Mm -hmm. discipline in your class right well yeah like i mean that doesn't leave you yeah exactly you know what i mean when you grow up 13 years of having that discipline at home that discipline in in school then you know it doesn't just leave you mm -hmm. i think you those um that always stays with you mm -hmm. you know like i would never speak out of line to an elderly person yeah. now today mm -hmm. um the same way i wouldn't when i was a kid yeah and same with my kids like i would expect the same from them yeah like i think that that character that that you have like just i don't know it's something that we don't uh, we don't really see too much today mm -hmm. and you when know? you were there like did you want to go back to scotland like was there a moment do you remember like so you kind of wanted to go back to scotland because it wasn't really i i mean i'm sure i did yeah but it it's not something like that was like oh i, I don't want to live here yeah okay okay it was just i wanted to get from from this horrible experience yeah. when I first went in that classroom yeah. to the next place, which we did quite quickly because my parents bought a house and okay. then I changed schools. Okay. So once I changed schools, yeah. like that whole kind of first experience yeah. left, left me you, yeah. and I moved forward. It's kind of like a fresh page. You yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now you're speaking. I no, it was literally, I didn't lose my accent by then. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, I still had it. But it was, I kind of knew how to deal with it. Uh -huh. So it was a little bit easier. Okay, nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. Okay, so then from there, you know, and your sisters, because you guys separated, did the relationship kind of uh, spread out or were you guys still close when you guys came here? Um, we were still, we were still pretty close. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Nice. We were nice. Still close. And then the baton thing, were you guys still doing that or no. like, what, so what did, what were you uh, doing to occupy your time while you were here? Was I mean, it more just school or? It was more school and then we moved. Okay. You know, we lived in an apartment and then we moved to a house. Okay. And, nice. You know, we were just growing. Okay. You know, as. Oh, so you're, so you're that fast tracked, you know, cause it, you moved from an apartment to a house pretty fast. Oh, it was huh? very quick. That was like a. If you look at British people, like yeah. when they immigrated, mm -hmm. the whole mentality is like pay off your mortgage. Okay. Buy a house, pay off your mortgage. Nice. Like all British people when they came here, that was I, that's from what I remember. Okay. It's like buy a house and pay off your mortgage. Nice. That was your goal was to pay off your mortgage. Okay. Nice, nice, so, nice. So, I mean, yeah, we literally had a house within three months. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Hey, you can't see you're in, uh, in the house business now. You know yeah. you know about houses from early, right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so then from there, right, we're, we're, go we're going through the, the phases, right, because I know you're a mother of three, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, let's get to that. So, you know, you're you're in, in here, you're in school, and then you graduate from school. Mm -hmm. Like, around what, what age were you when you got married and, and had started your family? So, um, I was 23 when I got married okay and I start I actually got pregnant almost immediately okay <laughs> so I was like a, a young mom like uh -huh. I was 25 when I had Anthony okay if you don't mind me asking mm -hmm. how did you and your husband meet so we worked together okay so I was working I was actually a student okay. I was doing my you know, co-op yeah so I was doing my co-op at the Holiday Inn mm -hmm. And um, I was working in the office, and then I was working also in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And um, my husband came as a chef apprentice okay. with an Italian chef, and they opened up the Italian restaurant there, okay. and I met him there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, from there, okay, let's go on. You had your, your child. So you then, said, yeah, yeah, we got married yeah. like a few years later, I guess five years later. Okay. And... Um, 
Is I he from Scotland also? Oh, no, he's Italian. Okay, he's, that's the Chico. That's the Chico, a, that's yeah. Italian, strong yeah. Italian name. Yeah. Okay, so nice. He's, yeah, he's Italian. Okay. And he has a great family. Mm -hmm. Like, my in-laws are amazing. Nice. They have a, a really nice family. Yeah. So, um, we bought a house. We um, had Anthony, our firstborn. Mm -hmm. And um, then we had, a few years later, we had Zachary. And uh -huh. then... Uh, a long way later, we had Benjamin. Okay, so, nice. Yeah. So when you had your family, like, were you still working at the the same uh, place where you guys met each other? No. Um, so I, I did my um, my hotel restaurant apprenticeship, okay. like the co op thing, mm -hmm. and then I did many jobs. Okay. Even when I worked there, I worked. Let's go through them. Let's go through them because it th this is wealth talk, you know. So okay. your journey is important, like you know, because your journey speaks to who you are today. Right. Okay. So what was the first job that you that you had? And so then let's go through the different jobs. It's actually jobs. a funny story because my sister wanted a job. OK. And I was only 14. OK. And she was so nervous to go for a job interview. I went with her. OK. And I ended up getting a job. And she didn't get it? <laughs> <laughs> so my first job was a hostess at Mother's Pizza. OK. Which was right beside Bramley City Center. OK. Yeah. So yeah. I was a hostess there. And then I worked as a waitress, and I worked in the kitchen there. I did the salad bar there. And okay. Uh, then I was a waitress eventually when I became of age. Okay. And then while I was working there, I did my hotel restaurant at the Holiday Inn, mm -hmm. and they hired me as a catering coordinator for to cater weddings and stuff out of the reception halls at the hotel. Okay. And then, but I was also working in the kitchen there. Okay. So but there was a conflict between the chef and the catering office because I was working both, both and yeah. you, they wanted me there and they wanted me there. Uh -huh. So it was kind of like conflict. So they're like, you have to quit one. So I quit in the office because the, the kitchen was so much fun. Okay. So I was working. Um, and then when I became of age, I worked in the bar. I was a shooter waitress. Okay. So I was young. I was yeah. 18 years old. Mm -hmm. We were able to serve. Mm -hmm. So it was a fun job for an 18 year old girl to yeah. do. So. I was like the shooter waitress there okay. in the most popular bar in Brampton. So it was it was fun. It nice. was fun. Then um, I went on to, I met my father-in-law's best friend, owned a clothing manufacturer down on Orphis. Mm -hmm. And um, so we went to meet him. My father-in-law said, oh, you have to meet my best friend. So Carlo and I went down, my husband. Okay. And we met him. He goes, oh, you want a job here? I'm like, sure. So he hired me to work as um, in the office. Oh, nice. First, we were doing inventory, and then um, he hired me to run this program for realtors, believe it or oh, not. Oh, wow, okay. So it was like suiting them up, mm -hmm. right, for, you know, it was a program they offered. It was kind of like a points program okay. where they got gift cards for how much they spent. So I did that for a while. And then um, Carlos' cousin, he offered me a job at Dun & Bradstreet. Okay. So I started my career at Dun & Bradstreet. I worked there. Um, I started off in sales accounting. Okay. And then I moved on to, um, we opened an education wing. Um, so I worked in that for a few years. Dun & Bradstreet, so I, so I don't know, I'm not familiar. What do they do? You know Equifax? Okay. Okay, so this is the, the corporate version. Of so they, okay. they do... Um, like credit check and credit everything? checks okay. on businesses. Okay. So, but it was so much more than that. Like yeah. it was like lots. But that's of, what they're known for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Nice. Yeah, for okay. for credit information. Mm -hmm. So I was selling credit information to businesses. Okay. So and then uh, prior to that, I was I was we were training people. Mm. So adult training, like on how to read financial statements, collection processes, oh, wow. and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Customer service, you know, all the mm -hmm. adult training kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I was selling that. And then, um, so I was there for 15 years. When I left, I was a relationship manager, so I was basically doing outside sales. Oh, okay. And then I had had my last baby. I knew it was going to be my last. Okay. And I decided I didn't want to, I didn't. I wanted to stay home okay. for a bit and raise my kids. Nice. So I ended up staying home. Okay. For 15 years. Nice. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. But I know being a mother is not easy because me... I like even I have some times when my wife would leave the kids with me. And I'm like, oh, I need a break. Yeah. So that's a job in itself. It is. You know, would you say that being a, a stay at home mom was even harder than the other jobs that you're doing? I take it. A hundred percent. Okay. A hundred percent. Because 
as a working mom, like, yeah, you still have all the work still to do at home. Mm -hmm. You know, the laundry, the cleaning, the cooking, whatever jobs you have at home. And mm -hmm. then you have your job. Mm -hmm. But when you're out of the house and yeah. someone else is watching your kids, you have time to put your makeup on. Yeah. Yeah. You get dressed up. Mm -hmm. You go for morning coffee with your friends mm -hmm. at work. You go out for lunch. Yeah. You can maybe get a little shopping done in there. But when you're home, like when I, when I first was home yeah. with my kids, mm -hmm. I was like, I had like an identity a crisis. Okay. I didn't know how to dress. I, I didn't know if I should fix my hair and put makeup on or if I should just not do anything. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I was always like in a suit. And now I'm home. I, I didn't even know. Like, I didn't know. What am I going to wear? Like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. how, do, how do I even dress? Like, yeah. what am I doing with all this time? Yeah. But staying home with the kids, you're, you know, some days you don't get to have a shower yeah. because you have these kids yeah, and you're exactly. running around. And then at the end of the day, it's like, oh, my God, my house is still upside down. Yeah. You know, there's dishes in the sink. There's uh, laundry piled up. Yeah. And I've spent my whole day, you know. Why, why? Too, so I, I know what it yeah, is to probably so, jumping around. And I yeah. was, I mean, I, I grew up with two brothers, too. So mm -hmm. I definitely know what that is. You yeah. Know? So yeah. boys. They're, boys are easy, but they're a handful. Yeah. Energy. A lot yeah, of energy. A lot of energy. Mm. So we put them in sports and stuff. Nice. I, I always said, like, because they were very energetic, mm -hmm. we need to put them in something. Mm -hmm. And so they started with gymnastics. And then okay. they went into Taekwondo or mm -hmm. uh, Shotokan martial arts. Yeah. And that was a good outlet for them yeah. to get a little discipline yeah. and learn some good ethics. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, burn off some energy. Yeah. So they both, the older two boys, they both um, became black belts. Wow. Anthony became second degree. And the whole idea wasn't like, oh, because you're going to become a martial artist. Yeah. The whole idea is you're going to build this discipline. Mm -hmm. Not just like discipline where, you know, you behave better, mm -hmm. but discipline that you need to exercise. Mm -hmm. And when you get older, like it's a discipline because... I mean, I used to go to the gym. Yeah. Carlo was a big gym buff. Mm -hmm. and But I, it wasn't something that I was disciplined to do. Mm -hmm. I forced myself Self, to yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I didn't want my kids to have to do that. Mm -hmm. So the, having that discipline, like now, yeah. all three of my boys, they work out. Yeah. They, I mean, not always. On their own time, On too. their yeah, own. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't have to say, oh, yeah. you should work out. Yeah. But they do it on their own. Mm -hmm. But it's because they have that. That foundation, I, yeah. That's what I, I mean, that's that was the reason I, why you... I'll take the credit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. You're yeah. the one pretty much putting them in all the programs, everything. Dan, I can imagine you have three children, and if they're doing different things, like, then mm -hmm. you're driving here oh, and there, yeah. everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go more in detail with that, like, because, you know, being a mother is is a is a job, and, I, I, and me knowing you, there are certain attributes that I, I've seen in you that I just wanted to get a better understanding because you are... On the ball all the time. You're always on top of everything. Would you say mm -hmm. that, I guess, looking after your children is, is instilled that in you? Um, I mean, I'm not on the ball all the time. I may appear to be on the ball all mm -hmm. the time. I have to say, like, the map book really helped me, like, in the last few years. Because I felt like getting into the real estate career, that it, I needed something to keep me on the ball. Mm -hmm. Like, with my kids, like, it was constant chaos. Mm -hmm. Like, if we had to go out somewhere, like, it was constant chaos. Yeah. It was like, okay, who's who needs something? Who spilt something? Who fell? Yeah. Like, my kids were so active, uh -huh. so hyper. It was it was just constant. Yeah. You know, like, you know Zach. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he was... He was quite a handful. <laughs> like, just even Benjamin. Yeah. Like, when they were little, it was like... I remember someone saying, oh... Benjamin's a little more hyper than Zach was. I'm like, no, you just forgot. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like one after the other. Because as they get older, they do calm down a mm -hmm, little bit more. Yeah. And now as adults, you know. Yeah, they're more calm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're more, obviously. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. they all still have their hyper moments. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah. It and was, was there a lot of um, arguments and fighting amongst them? Or did they get along majority of the time? Nothing really. They've always been really close. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, I guess, like, just like you and your sisters, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even more so. Okay, well, yeah. nice. Um, they've always been super close. 
Okay. You know, sometimes it's Anthony and Zach going out. Sometimes it's Benjamin mm -hmm. and Zach or all three of them. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, Anthony was always the, the one that would, he knew what to say. Okay. When is going to hit the fan, yeah. Anthony was the one who could calm everything down. Okay. You know what I mean? He yeah. was the one who knew how to deal with us parents. He's the oldest, right? He's the oldest. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. he kind of taught that to Zach. Like, yeah. Zach, just keep your mouth shut. She's yeah. having an attack. Like, yeah. she's going to kill you if you say anything else. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. He was always the one to calm everything down. Okay. And then Zach was always the one of reason. Okay. It's like, okay, you can't win with mm. Zach. Okay. It's not that he wants to be right. It's that he probably is right. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he is, and you, I mean, it's incredible. Like, he'll say something, and you're like, you can't argue with yeah. him because he's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, you just, and I mean, yeah. it, like I said, it's not that he wants to be right. He just is. Okay. So it's like, okay. Yeah. You're, you're right. Would you would you admit that to him that he's right, or you would just kind of more be quiet or something like that? Admit to him. No, I'm still uh, right. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> admit to him that I taught you that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. So while you're out with the kids, I take your, your husband was working, you know, so he was more, um, I guess, at that time, you know, supporting her family financially and stuff like, and yeah, stuff like that, right? Yeah, so um, my husband worked in corrections the first few years we got married. Okay. And it was really, really difficult times because he was dealing basically with, you know, inmates all day long. Okay. And it's very hard to separate that. Mm -hmm. As trained as you are, you can't leave certain things, certain images behind our work. Yeah. They, you bring them home. Mm -hmm. So um, early on, like I said to him, I said, you, you can't work this job. Mm -hmm. Like this job is like it's... You could see it come home. Yeah, like, it, okay. you can't help. Mm -hmm. You can't help it. Yeah. It's just like, I, and I would tell him, don't tell me. I can't hear the, the things. Like he would tell me certain things mm -hmm. and I'm like, I can't. Yeah. I can't have those images in my head. Yeah. I can't have that, you know. Yeah. And, I mean, he became a little bit angry mm -hmm. and, you know, negative. Yeah. And Because that he, energy transfers, right? Yeah. So that energy was transferring him, and, and it's it's good that you being the, you know, the, the main person of the household, you didn't want that to transfer in into the household, right? Yeah, it, was, nice. it wasn't a good it wasn't a good experience. I mean, he did his job. He liked his job, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, it wasn't translating to a happy home. Yeah, okay. So he made the decision to move to um, CBSA. Okay. So he became a border officer. Okay, nice, nice. And it was literally a 360-degree turn. Wow. Because now you're trying to cross the border and everyone likes you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Whereas <laughs> you're working in a jail and yeah. everybody hates, hates you. you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So literally, mm -hmm. like, it was amazing. Nice. Like, the transformation was amazing. Nice. When when I had Benjamin, he um, had just gotten into um, CBSA. Was mm -hmm. it Benjamin? Yeah, I think it was Benjamin, the little one. Yeah. And so he was gone for six weeks training. Wow. So I was left home with the newborn okay. and, you know, two hyper little boys. Yeah. So I was alone for quite a while while mm -hmm. he was gone. But, I mean, we managed. We just pulled it together. and. Nice. So yeah. I want you to talk about that, too, because um, you've been married for how long? Uh, 20... Eight years. Oh, congratulations. That's that's amazing. Life you know? plus three. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, and, 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 and that's what a lot of couples are aspiring to, you know, to, to have that relationship for, for so long because we know in relationships you do have your, your bumps in the road, yeah. right? So, you know, if you can just like uh, share with us, you know, some things that you guys did to make sure that you guys had kept that relationship solid, like, you know, and, and, and you kept that bond together with each other and mm -hmm. with the children, like as a family? Um, I mean, we've always been pretty respectful of each other. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you have your fights once in a while, but we've never really been big fighters, mm -hmm. Carlo and I. Um, I choose to let a lot of things go, mm -hmm. and he does too. So, I mean, we've always kind of had that happy medium all okay, the time. Nice, nice. Not to say we never fight, because yeah. we do. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, yes, yeah. of course we call each other nasty words once in a while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, it's not like we, it's not like we, we're not fighters. Exactly. Do you know what That's I mean? That's good, yeah. So um, we've always been, you know, we've done stuff as a family. Mm -hmm. And we've just had, like, basically, a, the most important thing is let's just have a happy home. Nice. Nice. You know, we've been through our turmoil with each of the boys, and mm -hmm. you know, we've made it through. So, yeah. 
I mean, we never had anything too, too dramatic mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. It was always kind of just, you know. So do you guys have, like, discussions? Like, do you guys sit down together and, like, and, and discuss anything? Like, let's say something's going on with the boys and stuff like that. Like, uh, how do you guys come to conclusions? Is it like you sit down with each other or uh, you, you have um, an idea and you tell Carlo, hey, this is, this is what I think we should do, or he says, this is how I think we should do? We haven't really had any major things where it has to be, you Get know, to that point, right? Yeah, okay. like now Benjamin's planning to go to flight school. Nice. And um, deciding which school he should go to. Mm -hmm. So Carlo, I mean, I'm really busy at work. Mm -hmm. Carlo has a little extra time right now. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of taken that on. Okay. And nice. I trust that he's doing the right thing. Nice. And I think like during our, our 30 year relationship, we've always just had that kind of trust. That, mm -hmm. You know, if he's doing something with the boys, yeah. I mean, he's very, very into our family. Nice. Very, you know, mm -hmm. very family, family, man. family, yeah. very yeah. family. Nice. Man. So his, the boys are his first priority. Nice. Like he's very close with the boys. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we just kind of trust each other that, you know, you're going to take, take that on mm -hmm. and it's not even it's not even a discussion okay and, you, know and you were just talking about um ben going to f a flight school like i know in in my culture like in, in the ghanian culture it's um obviously education is very important but one thing that they a lot of them preach is to be a doctor be a nurse be you know like they have specific professions mm -hmm. that you know they want everyone to be it and over here it seems like um, you guys are open, so is, is that how it is? You're, yeah. Whatever your children want, you yeah. support? I wanted to be a window dresser. I don't even know what that is. You know, you know, <laughs> in, you know in the, the stores? Oh, okay, yeah, the display? The, the mannequins. Yeah. I wanted to do that, and my parents didn't like that. Oh, they, they, they said no. So I never did it. Okay. And I think I would have been a really good window dresser. Okay. Or design, like I was always into that kind yeah. of stuff, right? So, um... I guess that stuck with you, right? It, it, well, yeah, yeah, like all these years later. Then I wanted to be a flight attendant. Okay. Oh, no, you're not tall enough. You're not thin enough. You're not, you know. Yeah. And it was always, it wasn't, it wasn't about, I mean, my parents didn't want us to be doctors or lawyers because uh -huh. it was really like, we, we didn't come from that background where you have to go to university. Yeah. We were working class people. Okay. We all worked. We mm. all contributed to the house. Mm -hmm. So me and my sisters, we all were work. We're all working class people. Okay, nice. You know, I look how I jump from job to job to job. Yeah, it was just opportunity. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about, you know, having the top notch education. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I want my kids to have good jobs. Yeah. But you know, they have to, you know, kind of feel what they want to do. Oh, most definitely, and that's wealth, right? And you know, and that's the main message that with the wealth talk that we want to get across is that you know, wealth is well being. You know, mm -hmm. wealth is, is enjoying life, mm -hmm. enjoying what you do, right? And it seems like that's what you want in your household. Mm -hmm. You want everyone to be enjoying what they do, yeah, right? for sure. Nice, nice. And I, and I take it you as well, right? So right now I know you're, you're into real estate, but I also know that uh, you used to do, have some self-employment uh, things that you were doing before, right? Can you go more in detail with that? Yeah, so when I was home, I needed to earn a little keep. You know, my kids wanted certain things. Yeah. And, so I did start up a, a business. I okay. was designing cakes. Okay. And I did that. I used my marketing skills from my past, mm -hmm. and um, I grew a small business. Okay. So why why cakes of all things? Because you, you enjoyed it? Or? No, it was it's total just idea? by accident. Oh, okay. By, so explain. Go in detail. I met this girl mm -hmm. at preschool with with Benjamin, uh -huh. and she said she had four kids. Mm -hmm. I had three kids. So she had this brilliant idea that we're going to learn how to make cakes so that when it was their birthdays, we could make the cake too. Oh, for the... Because we did everything. Oh, okay. So, I mean, okay. why not make the cake too? Okay. I'm like, no, that's the dumbest idea. We do everything for our kids. We make the loop bags. We yeah. throw these themed parties. We do it all. Uh -huh. And now we have to make the cake? How fair is that? Yeah. She's like, no, no, come with me. Let's go take the course. I yeah. said, no, 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 no. Let's do something else. Let's do floral design or something. Uh -huh. She's like, no, no, I'm going. So fine. She dragged me to this cake course. Okay. <laughs> and, and I mean, I just was naturally good at it. Mm. Like, you know, I'm whipping out flowers and she's like, just make one. Oh, yeah. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I'm, not that I, I didn't have to work to be good at it. Mm -hmm. I was natural. It's natural. Yeah. It's natural. Mm -hmm. It's not me. It's like God given. Yeah, natural yeah, talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, um, we started together um, this little business and she was getting clients i was getting clients and 
it ended up that... So it started first for your kids, and I guess probably other parents seeing the cake. Well, and what happened was when we took the classes, every week you had to make a cake. Okay. So we're like, oh, we can't make our kids eat all this sugar, mm -hmm. right? So we'd start giving them away. Okay. So every week we were making one cake each, yeah. so we'd give it away. Oh, nice. And then people started asking us to make cakes. Mm. And then we're like, okay. So then we started making them, mm. and, um, and then we started marketing them. Okay. Back then it was just email. Mm. And uh, then we got busy. She decided to go to work. She's like, um, she wasn't. So done with the kids. She was done with it. Okay, okay. I yeah. mean, she she liked it. Mm -hmm. She liked the idea of it, mm -hmm. but to do it for a business wasn't for her. Yeah. So I continued on. Yeah. And um, I had like a good little business going. Nice, nice. You see what you just mentioned right there. That's a lot of compensation because you know you didn't really have an intention to go out and make cakes at first. You were mm -hmm. just giving them away, mm -hmm. right? You were just giving cakes away, mm -hmm. and then automatically, people started reaching out to you yeah. and wanting cakes, mm -hmm. right? That's a lot of compensation. You were serving first. You were giving mm -hmm. service first, and then people just came right back to you, and yeah. now you have a business, Yeah, right? That's amazing. All right, so then how long did that business uh, go on for? So I did it for a few years, okay. and then I decided um, to get into real estate. Okay. So I was still doing my business while I was doing my courses. Okay. And um, I and how sorry your your children like how old were they at this time? Um, well, like, well, the youngest, the youngest, because that's the when you said that you yeah, stay at home. So he was probably in grade nine. Okay, so now you're like okay, he's he's the kids are yeah, good. the kids are good. Okay, okay. Like I don't have to run around so much. They're driving. They mm -hmm. drive each other around. Nice. So it was kind of. You yeah. know, it's my time. Exactly, yeah. And I wanted to get into a business where I can still help people mm -hmm. do something they shouldn't do on their own. Yeah. So, you know, not everyone should make a cake on their own. Exactly. Because they could ruin the party. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that concept and the fact that I always liked design and mm -hmm. houses and that kind of stuff, yeah. I thought it would be a good fit. Nice. So, and I would be helping people do something that they shouldn't really do on their own. Yeah, exactly. You know, like someone to sell their house on their yeah. own, it's not the best idea. No. You know what for I mean? Sure, for sure. Hire a professional. Yeah, exactly. Even when you go to buy a home, it's not it, because there's all the paperwork, all yeah. that stuff, that are those those um, conditions yeah. and things like that. You know, they you definitely want a professional. Oh, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so you decided, okay, I'm, I want to become a realtor. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. Okay. So um, I had a friend, he um, had asked me, like, for many years yeah. to, um, you know, you should do your real estate courses. And he kind of pushed me, like, um, you know, to to do it. Okay. So at first, it probably, it was in the, you liked the design, you liked the core and everything like that, but becoming a realtor wasn't in, in your mind until it someone was, brought it to your attention. It was years ago. Like, okay. I, I did have an intention to do it, but I kept looking at those books, and I'm like, uh, I'm not like, I don't like to read. I don't like to study. Yeah. Um, so just the thought of those books are so big. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. And I, so I did the first course. Uh -huh. And it took me, oh, my God, it took me forever to get through the book. Okay. And I had to make sure I knew everything. Yeah. And, you know, I went to the in class, I believe. for the No, I think I did the first one on my own. Okay. And then I went to the in class for the other ones. But it was hard. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. I studied like crazy and I was like so nervous. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to pass. Yeah. And then I'm going to look like a failure in front of my kids. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 but yeah, then yeah. I passed. I, I did really well because mm -hmm. I I studied the material mm -hmm. and I knew the material. Yeah. So when I wrote the exam, it was pretty easy. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. But, um, yeah, my friend had, he had said to me, he had kept saying to me, you know, you should get into real estate. Nice. And he had a brokerage. Yeah. So, um I eventually, I eventually did. Nice. And I thank him for that. You nice. know what I no, mean? For sure, for I sure. I mean, he didn't do the courses for me. Yeah. But I mean. He gave you that little push. He, he and did, And sometimes yeah. you need that push, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need just that little nudge saying, mm -hmm. hey, go, go, go. Yeah. So it was kind of, you wanted to do it, but you needed that extra voice telling yeah. you to go and do it, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And then from when you got into real estate, you just stopped the cake business completely or you were doing it a little yeah. bit? Or? No, I pretty much stopped. Um, almost completely. I was having uh, problems with my hands. Okay. So it was becoming hard for me to make the cakes. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I couldn't do both. Mm -hmm. I wanted to really focus on one thing. Nice. So I, my focus was real estate. Nice. You know? Yeah. I yeah. just, I just couldn't find the, the balance between the both of them. Yeah. 
Um, I did it for a few months, and yeah. I said, no, I need to focus. Focus on the real estate. Because, you know, in real estate, like, somebody needs you. You have yeah, to you run, are, yeah, or yeah, someone yeah. else is going to grab it. <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah. I want to see this house. Well, I'm busy today. Well, okay. uh, I'll yeah. go see it myself exactly. with another realtor. Exactly. So, yeah. Right, and, I, and you obviously get more fulfillment in, in real estate because you're helping someone find a home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, and and, and, I, and in terms of your character, you know, I see that, you know, you care about people. You know, that's mm -hmm. one thing that I, I've noticed about you. You really care about people. And so this is the perfect uh, profession for you. Right? Um, and I, that's how we met. Yeah, exactly. Right? You know, exactly. so so get into that. Like, when you first came into real estate, you know, what was that like? And, you know, uh, coming from then to now, you know, now you're seasoned, you know, so... You know, coming into the a new a whole new world because you were staying at home you said, for fifteen mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. right? So you're stay at home, and then now you're prof a professional. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're in home clothes, and now you're in yeah. You know, so that was another it, transition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it was hard. Like my first few years in real estate were really hard. Mm. I learned so many lessons, tough lessons. Yeah. Um, expensive lessons. Mm -hmm. um, I had so many of the i don't want to say the worst clients because okay. they weren't the worst clients yeah. it's just i was still learning learning and yeah. i was you know didn't know a lot of things mm -hmm. and i didn't have a lot of guidance mm -hmm. i felt like you know you take the courses and but they don't really teach you how to do the job yeah yeah so yeah. i i don't know i felt like i was going in blind mm -hmm. and all i wanted to be in real estate was i wanted to be really good at my job nice and i still yeah. want to be really good i nice. don't want to be like you know canada's number one real estate yeah. agent but I just want to be really good at what I do. Nice. You know, that my clients know when they move into their house that everything is fine. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So, and I'm still, I'm still working on that. I'm still learning. And yeah. I know I will still continue to Of course. To yeah. learn. Focus 11, you know, yeah. that's one of the aspects. Yeah. Learn. We always got to be learning. Always got to be growing. And, you know, as you're growing and learning, you get to do more of what you said you want to be, which is a really good agent, really yeah. good at what you do. Right. Yeah, for sure. Okay, great. So I, um, with real estate now, you know, let's get into real estate, mm -hmm. right? Because you know, now we could get into you know home ownership and why is that important? And you know, you being in there in, ter in terms of your client and what you want to do really good for them. What are the things that you feel are are key, you know, for your clients, you know, when they are looking for real estate? So I mean, it's really important that they understand the process of buying a home. Mm -hmm. Many people will call and say, oh, I want to buy a home. Mm -hmm. Well, do, are you qualified? Mm -hmm. And I feel like people, there's, I met this young kid the other day on my driveway. Mm -hmm. One of uh, my kid's friends, he says, miss, I heard that you're like a, a big time real estate agent. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, big shot too. <laughs> so um, he says, I want to buy a house. Mm. I said, oh, that's amazing. Like, you're so young. Like, yeah. have you saved up a down payment? Yeah, I'm ready to buy a house. Yeah. And I said, well, how much money did you save? He said, $15,000. Okay. I said, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. You've done a really good job at your age to save $15,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. I said, it, the money is one thing, but you need to have more money. Yeah. So you need to keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. And we'll sit down and talk and, you know. Yeah, you could prep for him, show him, the guide him. Show him, him w yeah. continue doing what you're doing. But so many young people, they have no idea mm -hmm. that they need to have good credit. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to save as much money to get that 20% down to mm -hmm. put on a house, to, you know, to be in the best position to buy a house. Yeah. You, you should really try to get that 20% down. Mm -hmm. Um and um, yeah, it's it's they just they don't have that knowledge. Yeah, they, re they really should teach it in school. Yeah, you know what a, what a credit bureau looks like. Yeah, you know what your score should be at. Mm -hmm. How to manipulate your score and get it to the highest. Yeah, um, and you, you have know, a history in that because you used to work for exactly. a company, so you could even help them further on yeah. that, right? So nice. oh, for sure. Yeah. and then you know saving. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, kids, I mean, my kids are probably the worst for it. Like yeah. Amazon and Skip the Dishes and yeah. Uber Eats. Yeah. They, I mean, they know me. Just press the button. And it's like they're at the door all the time. Oh, they should yeah. just have a kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, no, save your money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, when, I, I don't know, it's like the shoemaker with no shoes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can preach it, but I can't, 
you know. Yeah, enforce it, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly, right? exactly. So, but I think that, you know, when people are getting into home ownership, the earlier they learn those traits, the better off they are when they are actually qualified to buy a home. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice, nice. So what else though, like what else, like, you know, so we're talking about get saving up, you know, um, your credit, you know, what else is required? You know, I, 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 I'm familiar, but at the same time, you know, it's important for us to get this information out there because there could be someone that's listening or watching to this mm -hmm. podcast mm -hmm. and they're at that position, mm -hmm. you know, where they, they want to buy a house. Yeah. Right. And it's not only young people. It's also, you know, adults who say they've been renting yeah. for, for so long and they want to own a home. Mm -hmm. Like, what are the steps? So, I mean, obviously the first step is to get pre-qualified. Mm -hmm. So sit down with your bank or a mortgage broker mm -hmm. and get pre-qualified. Mm -hmm. Once you're pre-qualified, you know what category to shop in. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you go shopping for clothes. You can go to Walmart and buy a t-shirt or you can go to Holt Renfrew and buy a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Can you afford the Holt Renfrew t-shirt? No. Right? Probably not. Exactly. Can you afford the one from Walmart? Yes. Probably yes, mm -hmm. right? So it's just finding out where you're going to go shopping. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So once you know where you're going shopping, mm -hmm. then that's when you, you know, you start uh, looking at different areas. Yeah. And it's really important to look at your first investment as, you know, your, it's your your first home. Mm -hmm. um, but also, like, you may have it for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So what schools are in the area? Mm -hmm. What amenities are close by? How mm -hmm. far is it going to take me to get to work? Yeah. How much the taxes are? How much insurance is? Mm -hmm. All those things matter. Yeah. So it's just like getting to know. And I, I recommend like, you know, I'm shopping with some young people now and I'm yeah. like, they put it, they wanted to put an offer in a home out in Hamilton. And mm -hmm. I said, have you ever been to Hamilton? Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, yeah, we went a year ago. I'm like, go for a drive in that area. Mm -hmm. Go to the coffee shop, have a coffee, go have lunch there, yeah. drive around, get a feel for the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Because like anywhere you buy a house, yeah. there's good pockets and there's bad pockets. Yeah. And you want to be in the best pocket of that area. Yeah. You know, for your safety, for your you know, longevity of living in that home mm -hmm. and then for your investment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those things like I find are really, really important. Mm -hmm. So whether it's us doing the work as yeah. agents to find those great pockets, which we're, you know, we're familiar with. But it's also about our, our clients having that comfort level. Yeah. Are you willing to drive an hour from work mm -hmm. to afford a house? Yeah. Or is that going to be a big sacrifice on your family? Are you do you have kids? Yeah. You know, all those things come into play. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do come with the idea of what where they want to live, mm -hmm. which is good. Some people they don't they don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. So it's just guiding them in the right direction and making sure that they are in a place that they you know, is sustainable for them. Yeah. And that their their investment will eventually grow. Okay, nice. One thing that I, I heard you say over and over is young people, young people. And um, I noticed that, you know, you have that motherly feel with everybody. Like even, even with me, I always see that, like you're always looking out, you're checking in, you know, you're always looking over things, even with the Create Wealth Network, you know, you're, you're posting a group, reaching out to the different members mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like that's a key quality that I noticed that you have. Would you say it's because of all the, the time that you spent with your children? Or, or I, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's just a natural thing, yeah. I guess. So, because you're 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 really you know serving, like you always want to serve, you always mm -hmm. want to help, and you always go that extra mile and take things on as if they're yours. Like right now, we're here at your brokerage, mm -hmm. and um, uh, right before we started the wealth talk, uh, you were you were giving the broker record some insight on how they can even make this brokerage better. Mm -hmm. um, the the marketing person, you gave them insight on what they should do with the marketing. So you're always extending yourself. Now, I want you to talk about, uh, talk about that more and why is that important to actually go and extend yourself and, you know, see how you can add value to what other people are doing. Because, mm -hmm. it, of course, it reflects to you, but it more reflects to the other, the other party that you're mm -hmm. actually serving. Um, it's a good question. I don't know why I do it. I, I, it makes me feel good. Nice. When other people benefit from something that is in my head mm -hmm. that maybe... Maybe it's not in my control. Like, for example, the marketing guy, oh, can you maybe try this and yeah. share it with everybody? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I've always, I learned in, in business that um, there's people in business that are very closed, you know, 
and I experienced this in real estate where I, I wanted to go on calls with other agents. Mm -hmm. No, you're going to learn my secret. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, aren't we all in the same business? Are yeah. we going to help each other? Mm -hmm. Very close. But I, I learned, I don't remember who I learned it from, but this person, they, they always were okay to share their ideas. Mm -hmm. and, and I took that on, and when I was in the cake business, um, you know, I'd meet designers at the cake suppliers and, you know, I would talk to them and mm. I would give them clients. Nice. If I was too busy, yeah, yeah take, try this girl. Yeah. Or, you know, we would share ideas mm -hmm. like, and people are like, oh, you're telling her how to do that, but now she's going to know how to do it. Mm. That's okay. Yeah. And it turns out that, you know, years later, like some of those people are now my clients. In nice. Real estate. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, um, I don't know. It's just something I... I do. Yeah. No, you know I notice. I, mean? like, I noticed that in you, like all the time. Like you're always giving yourself. It's like you're giving yourself for everyone. Every, every, it's Kathy's mm -hmm. for everyone to share. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's what it seems like. You know, <laughs> but that's amazing because, like you said, most people, you know, want to keep things to themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want to share. They feel like they have a secret, and yeah, you know, yeah, they, yeah. they're keeping it to themselves. If anyone knows, then you know, they they lost their business. But yeah, you don't yeah. think that way. I don't. I, tr I, I mean, obviously, there's a few little tidbits that you don't want to just blurt out mm -hmm. and keep to yourself. But for the most part, if someone else can benefit from it um, or if we can grow, like we've, we've worked in teams before, mm -hmm. uh, partnerships before, mm -hmm. and I think it's just beneficial for everybody. And I don't know. I, it comes back to you. It does. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I share with you. You yeah. share with someone else. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe she does it better than you. Yeah. You know, when I had my cake business, it was people who did things better. And I would say, no, 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 I can't do that. Yeah. I'm going to refer you to someone mm -hmm. who does it better than I. Mm -hmm. Like cars, like car cakes or yeah. shoes or yeah. animals. Yeah. Not shoes, but animals. Yeah. There was a girl, she was amazing at it. Nice. So I would refer my client. Mm -hmm. I can't do it, yeah. but she does an amazing exactly. job. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I could have taken the business. Exactly. But why am I going to go stress myself out when someone else does it so much better mm -hmm. and they're going to be happier? Mm -hmm. And if she keeps that client, yeah. oh well. Yeah, exactly. Maybe they connect better. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. at the same time, they will remember you because mm -hmm. you're the one that made that connection. You're yeah. the one who who referred them over to that other person, yeah. right? And and these are key qualities that you know are, are important on wealth talk. You know, go in and share. If you have a specialty, if you if you know that you could help anyone else in any way then you should mm -hmm. go out and, and share that knowledge, yeah. right? Give that information out there, you know, because it comes back to you. Yeah. And even with me asking uh, the question and you saying, I don't know, that means it's just, it's just a part of your nature. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I recognized from you from day one. You know, uh, as you mentioned, we were in a team, right? And when we were in the team, you know, I, I, I ha ha I'm always observing, seeing what's going on, right? And I've seen you pretty much take on... Uh, a company as if it was your own mm -hmm. and you went and you you were you're going out of your way you know to pretty much bring that company to the next level mm -hmm. right and i the person that we were working with i guess maybe they didn't see it as that you know mm -hmm. from my just third party perspective you know it seemed as if you were kind of taking over the thing but i seen what you're doing you wanted to help and take that to the next level. Mm -hmm. And even right now, you know, with the map book and create wealth network, the same thing, mm -hmm. right? But I seen that from the beginning. And from when I seen that, I'll be honest, I'm like, this lady, I need to keep a good relationship with this lady because she's very serving. She's, uh, she's always extending herself, you know, and you know, that's a key attribute that not everybody has, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the fact that you don't even realize that you're doing it is amazing. You know, so yeah, I do want to commend you on that for of, sure. Part of, I don't know. It's just part of me. It. I mean, I would feel good when I help other people. Yeah, for sure. So I mean, I know that might sound a little selfish. I don't do it to feel good, but I do. I don't. I don't know. It's just definitely my, not selfish. It's, it's just definitely my nature, yeah, yeah. It's, you know? it's, it, and and that's that's one thing too. You know, when 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 we when people give, right, and when we receive, because there's two ends, right? There's giving and the receiving end, right? And um, most of the time, people on the receiving end feel that. They're, the ben they're benefiting the most. Mm -hmm. But in actuality, the person who gives usually feels better than the person yeah, who's receiving. For sure. Right? And that's pretty much you. So it gives you a good feeling. Mm -hmm. you know, so I want you to talk about feeling. I want you to talk about, you know, feeling and, and emotions. Because that's something that, you know, with wealth, that's the message we're trying to get across. Mm -hmm. You know, that you know, wealth is well-being. Wealth is feeling good. Mm -hmm. You know, so how important is it in 
for you to be feeling good, right? And please go through some situations maybe where you didn't feel the greatest, mm -hmm. but then you were it, it, you you position yourself to feel good. Okay, so I have to say, like, when I first started with the map book and you start talking about the laws of all, you know, the universal laws and stuff, yeah. um, I was just literally, like, finding these laws. Okay. I didn't know anything about them before. Yeah. And um, when you say about feeling and and then we I, once I was part of the program and I started learning about these feelings because you have such a way of when someone says something to you, you're like so calm. You're like, no. Me, if someone says something to me, I'm like, what? Oh my God, oh my God, I'm gonna die. And then I get scared, and then I get nervous, and then I get sick, and I'm like, okay, this person literally said the same thing to me that he said to Richard, and I'm like freaking out. Mm -hmm. And Richard's like, nah. So, I mean, I've trained, I'm trying to train myself to be more um, non-responsive, I guess I could say, mm -hmm. or, Take things in, but not be reactive yes. to them. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I mean, it's the hardest thing to learn how to do mm -hmm. because your body just naturally reacts to negative situations. Yeah. And then your mind starts thinking, mm -hmm. you know, oh, this is going to happen. No, this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, no, sometimes nothing happens. Yeah. And you've gone through all this drama and nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. So for me, like, I, I mean, I think it's really important to feel good. Mm -hmm. And, but it's also a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. to Something that you balance. need to train yourself, for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I mean, I wish it was a switch that you could just turn off and you're just like numb to all the negative things that come through. Mm -hmm. You know, even with our clients, like yeah. you know, oh, yeah. we're like therapists. Oh, for sure. And yeah. we're getting bombarded with, oh, like from the wife, the husband, the wife, the husband, the broker, the, you know, the... Um, the mortgage the, the broker, mor the, the lawyer. The mortgage, <laughs> how am I, yeah. like I'm going through it right now. Yeah. Are, are they going to qualify? Am I going to lose this deal? Yeah. We're going to be homeless. What are you going to mm -hmm. do? Like, And mm -hmm. you're constantly, and it's like, oh, my God, like I lose sleep mm -hmm. because I'm like, oh, my God, I am totally responsible for this transaction, yeah. which I'm not because mm -hmm. it's not my fault that yeah. they'd, they're in a bad financial position. It's not my fault that the bank is going to appraise it at what they're going to appraise it. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's not my fault that the agent's going to take it away from me tomorrow if I don't get this deal done. Mm. So, I mean, there's literally not much under my control. Yeah. But I'm reacting to it because I feel so responsible for mm. it because it's my client yeah. and I want them to have what they want. Yeah, and your goal is to be the best that you exactly. could be, right? Yeah, exactly. So you're like spinning your wheels trying to get all this stuff done. But at the end of the day, like half of it's out of your control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've gone through and and hopefully the deal will go through. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, you have to pick up yeah. and move on. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And that's one thing that I learned in real estate, or maybe even before, but it's like, I mean, we were trained in sales. You're only as good as your last sale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's like, now it's like, if a deal falls apart, yeah. or if a client walks away, mm -hmm. or, you know, you just can't help someone, yeah. next. Exactly. You know, we, yeah. we, we experienced it in pre-con all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Selling pre-construction, you're dealing with someone yeah. and you're on the phone with them. You think that you, they're, they're a hundred, a thousand percent of buying from you. Yeah. And then the next day they they ghost you. They don't answer your call. They text. <laughs> yeah, yeah, You know exactly. what I mean? If you can't have that mentality, mm -hmm. you should not be in real estate. Mm -hmm. you no, and, that, and that, that happens all the time in life. Mm -hmm. And that's why... You know, you have, it, understanding the laws are important because mm -hmm. you have to practice the law of detachment, mm -hmm. right? Where you detach yourself from the situation, yeah. right? Then you don't, you, you don't really react negatively on it because it's like, okay, it's out of my control. What yeah. can I do really, right? Yeah. You got to move on, like you said, next, yeah. right? You know, and, and, and that's that's important right there. So that's another key there. So you're, you're going to refer to the map book. And I want to uh, go into that as well because, you know, when you join the, when you join the program... I know at first I was mentioning it to you, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, I guess you, you, were, you were thinking about it, and but you didn't join right away, no. you know, from when, from when I told you about it. So what is it that made you want to get in, involved with the program? So at first I was like, oh, it's just an empty book, and I can do this on my own. I write my own list. Why do I have to 
join. But then I was like, no, I told Richard I was going to join. I mm -hmm. wanted to support you. Nice. Thanks. And then um, I didn't, I mean, I just thought it was an empty book. Okay. Honestly, like okay. I didn't <laughs> know it was more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't know that it was, you know, we were communicating each day. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about the weekly GPS, mm -hmm. like where we're meeting in a Zoom meeting once a week. Yeah. So I didn't know all that. I just thought it was an empty book and I was on my own. Okay. So when I joined, I was kind of blind. Okay. And I joined because I said I was going to join. Yeah, yeah. And I held my word and mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to join. I mean, what what am I? What do I have to lose? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Yeah. So I joined and um, I'm telling you. Okay, so in the beginning, I, I used it every day. Nice. I made the commitment, maybe not every single day, yeah. but I was committed to it. Yeah. I found it really hard for me to write my affirmation. Yeah. Because I didn't understand that big. I still struggle with my yeah. affirmation. Yeah. I feel it's like it's not it a struggle. It's just that we're always discovering. So every every day, mm -hmm. it's a new discovery. So that's why you'll always be adding to it. Yeah. Or even subtracting from it, yeah. or you know, molding it together, right? Because as you get more awareness and more discovery, then you're gonna shape, reshape it, right? Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. But go on, go on. But once I started getting into it, and I started because of the goals, because there's eleven goals, I never, ever, ever mm -hmm. set goals for spiritual. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a girl, so we always had physical and yeah. you know, like diet goals, yeah, and, and financial weight loss goals, goals, of course, yeah. financial goals. Yeah. But I never had like discipline mm -hmm. well no discipline maybe but uh spiritual goals um contribution contribution mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um relationship, yourself i know you, you're on uh, yourself my, myself yeah because yeah. you're always giving yeah. giving giving right and i one day i'll treat myself yeah you <laughs> <laughs> um but i never set goals like that before mm -hmm. and then i start setting these goals and one of the ones that was like life-changing for me has to be my relationship goal Nice. And because, like, we're a busy family, mm -hmm. our kitchen table does not get used to you. Mm. Like, that kitchen table, as beautiful it is as it is, it's always empty. Wow. Or there's books on it or mm -hmm. purses and coats, and it's mm -hmm. never for eating. Wow. So because we're, like, one eats at this time and mm -hmm. one's doing this diet and one's not home yeah. and one's going out for dinner. Mm -hmm. So one of the goals I wrote in there was to have family dinner. Nice. So the only time that we're all kind of together is mm -hmm. Sunday afternoons. Okay. So I had set one month to yeah. have dinner on a Sunday afternoon with nice. my family. Nice. So I had four weeks to do it. Uh -huh. So we finally got our first one. Oh, wow. My kids were so happy. Wow. And we sat there and we chatted and, nice. we, you know. And then so every month in relationship, I yeah. started putting, you know, take whoever out for dinner, yeah. like one kid at a time mm -hmm. kind of thing. And it became like part of my life. Nice. Before, I wouldn't think of that. Yeah. Be like, okay, well, we don't eat together because we're never home together. Yeah. But I never made the effort mm -hmm. to have dinner with mm -hmm. the family together. Nice. And just having the map book, it was like I was almost forced to do it. Mm -hmm. But not forced because I wanted to you do wanted it. You wanted to it, yeah. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I yeah. love having yeah. my kids all together, yeah. my husband, my kids, you know, yeah, yeah. having them all together. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then there was other stuff. I mean, there's so many things in the book that I've, well, with, with, let's let's stop at that for one quick moment, you know, and when your family came together and you guys had the dinner and everyone was so happy, you know, um, and the feeling obviously for you was happy, right? It, mm -hmm. it reflected back to you. But what else did you notice? You know, from that, from that, like what else have you noticed? Just in terms of family dynamics, do you, would you say that um, it, it got your relationship bond closer, like all together? Yeah, so like I, I pay a little more attention to those things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have to say the last couple of months have been really busy. Yeah. So we haven't really, I mean, we did a family dinner on the weekend, but yes. we haven't like really, um, I had other relationship yeah. things like mm -hmm. friends and things nice, that nice. I had put in there too. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, definitely brought us closer together as nice. a family. And nice. I mean, when I got the book, I didn't think that's going to happen. Yeah. That was never even in my, you can't pay for that. Exactly. Like there's exactly. no money that can pay for mm -hmm. that. None. For sure, for sure. Do you know what I mean? For sure. And there's so many other things in the book, like spiritual goals, meditating, yeah. um, just even like the laws of yeah. the universe, like mm -hmm. learning about them and putting them into action. Yeah. Like I remember one of my friends saying to me, mm, you're doing that because 
when I met you, I would you're the last person I would expect. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like following these laws yeah. and kind of playing with them. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, experimenting yeah, with yeah, them yeah, and yeah, yeah. watching them. Mm. But I mean, they're so subtle. Mm. They're so subtle. You yeah. call it coincidence. Well, I would call it coincidence. You yeah. would call it the laws. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, uh, which one is it? it it's. it's it's in both in a way, it's right? The laws. But exactly, I mean, really, and like, yeah, is but it that a it's it's, it's not a coincidence. It's, it's the laws, but people would see it as a coincidence, yeah. right? And then as you understand the laws more, they happen a lot more, and you recognize them more, mm -hmm. right? And you know, and, and that's that's really key because as you recognize them, you know, then you know you're in alignment, mm -hmm. you know, with 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 the laws. And when you're in alignment, you know, I liken it to like going. In, in flow with the stream you know mm -hmm. you're, yeah. it's there's there's not much resistance mm -hmm. you know because you're you're just going in a line alignment with how things just naturally work yeah right and um what else can you share about the program because there's many people that i i you know i talk to or reach out to me about the mind assistance program and but they had they're not in you know like you said before you just thought it was an empty book mm -hmm. right so like what else what else have you uh, noticed or experienced within being in a program so my book is like my refresh, like my morning. Like before, when, you know, when you have chaos, like you have so many things going on, before I'd have to, I would take everything off my desk and clean it. And mm -hmm. then put my things back and organize. Mm -hmm. Now it's like I grab my map book. Nice. And whether I've wrote my goals or read my goals, it's like kind of my go-to. It's like I need my book. Mm -hmm. I need to sit down, take yeah. my few minutes for me, mm -hmm. read my book, write my goals, and then just reflect on what I'm going to do that day. Mm -hmm. Some days, like, I don't write anything. Yeah. Like, not often, but I may write, write two goals, and then I can't, I'm like, okay, what else? Yeah. But, I mean, then I have to go back and look at my week and yeah. my month and say, okay, let me get these out of the way. Yeah. But for me, personally, like, it's, um, I don't know. I, I don't know what I would do without it. Like, because it's, like, every day, I have it with me and yeah. I write my goals, even the weekly GPS. Yeah. Like if I know I'm going to miss it, like I almost missed it last week because yeah. I had people over, mm -hmm. but it was like I had it in my head. I was like, yeah. oh man, it's 8 o'clock. <laughs> I didn't want them to leave yeah. because we were having a good time, yeah. but I also didn't want to miss my GPS mm -hmm. because it's like that weekly reset mm -hmm. that I'm going to learn something. Yeah. And even if I learn nothing, it's mm -hmm. just like that reset. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nine times out of ten, we do learn something. Yeah, for no, sure, for sure, right? for sure. And 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 learning, and that's the thing with the GPS because it's a collective. Mm -hmm. And the GPS is not the GPS if everyone's not on. Yeah. You know, so I feel you feel that obligation that you're needed in that GPS, which mm -hmm. you are all the time, right? Because your input, you know, you may you could say a few words or you could say a, a lot, mm -hmm. right? But everything that you're saying. It, it touches every single person that's mm -hmm. on the GPS, mm -hmm. you know, and, and when you're talking about sitting and, and reading your map book to yourself mm -hmm. and going out, you know, that's very important for us to get out there as well because it's, it's like breathing. I liken it to breathing because yeah. when we breathe, we inhale and we exhale, mm -hmm. right? But most people in this world, it's like they're exhaling all day because they get up and then right away, they're reacted to this. Maybe their phone rings. They got to react yeah. to the phone call. Oh, you got to be here. Now they got to go here. Now yeah. they're there. And then there's something else happens. Then they got to go here. Yeah. Then they got to go here. Here, here, here. And then the day's done. Yeah. Next day, same thing. But see, when right. I'm in that mode where it's here, 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 mm -hmm. it's like I got to get my book and I got to just write it down. Mm -hmm. And then I'm more calm. Exactly. It's like I've taken just a minute. Mm -hmm. I know, like, I know my phone is ringing. I know I have to send that email. I know mm -hmm. I have to meet that client. Mm -hmm. I know I have to prepare for a listing mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But I just need a minute. Mm -hmm. I need a minute mm -hmm. to sit down and just, and it just makes, I don't know. It's like when you put it down on paper, it's not so chaotic. Nice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But there's some days when I just fall right into chaos. Yeah. And it's like, man, I should have wrote it down. Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. You know what I mean? It's I know, like, yeah, 100%. It's like, 100%. But I mean, I like I said, I've been on the program for over, this is my second year. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I mean, I use it every single day. I okay, think, nice. you know, one or two days I miss here and there, but I mean, pretty much I use it every single day. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. No, for sure. And it should be used daily, you know, and, you know, with, with that as well, you know, I want you to even go into, you know, just different 
things that you've, you've learned and, you know, along the way, and not only with you being in the Ma Minor Sisters program, but also just in general, you know, like what kind of, what can you share with, you know, the listeners, with the viewers, you know, things that you've gone through, th experiences that you learn or any gems that you could share, you know, to help people, you know, get, you know, maybe they're at a certain point where they just want to get across that point. You know, is there anything that you could share? I think one of, one key thing that I learned was that I need to continue learning. Mm. You know, I'm not, I don't like to read. I no. just don't. It's mm -hmm. not my thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can watch a movie, but I'm just not one who likes to read for some reason. Yeah. So, um, but I do like to learn. Yeah. And I think that the, the map book has opened me up to reading more. Okay. And, you know, I've been reading um, a, a bunch of different, mostly motivational books that we, you know, people who have referred mm -hmm. in the network. And I think that that's one, one of the key things that I, that I got out of the map book was you need to continue growing and learning as a person. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it, it doesn't mean I have to learn motivational books or any kind of books. It's like anything. Yeah. Like even the laws of attraction yeah, and yeah. all these different laws. Yeah. It's like, okay, I need to learn. I need to know how to, this yeah. all works. Yeah. And I mean, I, I've told you before that I never thought as a woman my age mm -hmm. that I would learn so much from a young man your yeah. age. Okay. I, it, it's not something that I never, like, I, it's not like I thought about yeah. it. But looking back, I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. this young guy yeah. i've learned so much from well thank no i appreciate that and that's something that i want to uh, put out to you too that you know you're very humble in that way because you know there are people who i reach out to and i know they're like okay what why, why am i going to take this guy sir so you having that open mind you mm -hmm. know it, it i'm really grateful for that because you know it it, it it's reflective all like across the board you mm -hmm. know not just in this program but i notice you you're a listener you know, and not only, not only that you listen, but you, you like to learn, mm -hmm. right? And you have an open mind, you know, mm -hmm. which is very important. When you have an open mind, that means your ego you're putting aside, mm -hmm. you know, and you're actually just opening up just to take a listen, yeah. you know, and just to hear. And if, it, if, it, if you're interested, mm -hmm. then you could dive in, you know, and that's how you could learn more because you're open, yeah. right? You know, so I thank you on that as well, you know, for, for, for having that open mind and actually yeah. opening up to the program and taking it serious, yeah. you know, and, and, and the discipline as well, mm -hmm. you know, and that's another thing that I noticed with you. Discipline, right? Another thing I noticed about you is your creativity. You're very creative. You know, where, where did this come from? Like, I don't know. I've always been super creative. Okay. I love being creative. Yeah. My mind, like when something, I don't know, when something gets in my head, I'm like, oh, yeah just keeps going it's like i'm a little mouse on yeah. the wheel and i just i love being creative yeah you know so whether it's like in business or you know my marketing pieces mm. like i can you know i get into that mode and i'm like creating and i see that end result and it's like oh wow i made that it looks really good you yeah know what i mean i just i love that nice and i think it's something i don't know if it's the reward at the end that i love i love the process of mm -hmm. it um it's just something in me that, I mean, look at my cake business. Who yeah. would have thought that I could make cakes? Yeah, exactly. Like beautiful pieces of art. Mm -hmm. Like people wouldn't want to eat them because they're so pretty. Yeah. And it, I'm not saying that to brag that I was this big cake boss. Yeah. But, I mean, it's something that I have naturally mm -hmm. that happened. And, I, I mean, I'm grateful that I, yeah. that this and this worked. And, yeah. you know, but, I mean, I, I, I've always been, very creative. Yeah, and you're tapping in. You know, you're tapping into your your inner your inner self and your higher being. Because even I um, you you made like a package, like a a gift basket, mm. and it was so creative. Like I see you do them all the time, and I'm like, like where does she get her creativity from? Mm. But you're tapping in. Mm -hmm. You're really tapping into you know your inner being, and you're getting all these ideas, and mm -hmm. then you're putting them out there. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that's that's one of the main things that we want to get across with the map book too, because we have all these ideas that come to mind mm -hmm. and everyone has so many ideas, mm -hmm. right? But no one actually goes and acts through them. So you've been actually been acting on your ideas all this time, you know, and not even realizing that you're, you're, you're really tapping in, yeah. you know, and, and mm -hmm. that's pretty much what you've been doing. And, you know, right now I, I'm grateful that you're in the map book, but I see, see you doing it all the time, you know? So 
now you're here, you're established, you're, you're a marketer, you're a realtor, you know, what is um, something important that you, like an important message that you want to get out there? Like with regards to? With regards to real estate, in regards to life, in regards to, to anything. I mean, like you said something the other day in the weekly GPS mm -hmm. and it really resonated with me. You said you spoke to someone and they didn't do something because life got in the way. Mm. Like what I would say to our viewers is don't let life get in the way. Mm. If you need like if you need something to take you to the next level personally, um, physically, mentally, like this is a great tool. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to sound like a sales pitch because I, I'm I don't think this has to be sold. Yeah, it's a tool that anyone can use. Mm -hmm. It's not about Richard. It's about you mm -hmm. as a person because if you don't put yourself into it, then I mean Richard can't help you. Mm -hmm. I mean Richard is there to guide you and you know mentor you. I look at Richard as my mentor, right. and. Um, the book, I, d I don't know, like it's done so much for me, like mm -hmm. I can't even explain it. Like my son joined. Yeah. I didn't tell him to join. Mm -hmm. I told him I'm not paying for your book. Mm -hmm. um, he saw w the way I changed mm -hmm. and what bigger compliment could you have yeah. or I have yeah. that my son joined. No, for sure. I Do know. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like and he's, he's amazing. He's doing amazing in program yeah, like as well. He's like he's plugged young in. Guy yeah, yeah. And he's competitive. Yeah. And you know, and he's doing things. Yeah. Like, I see the change in him. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, like, for me, the map book, I never thought, I never expected. I just thought I was going to be writing my, my list and taking my list and putting it on paper. Mm -hmm. I never thought it would be what I've gotten out of it. Okay. Money can't buy you what I got out of this book. Okay, okay. Like, it's, it's, I mean, the investment is so little. Yeah. The changes are so big. Okay, no, I thank you for that. I thank you yeah. for that. You know, especially for the people who are, are have seen it, you know, and are maybe considering it, you know, and they don't understand, you know, that that means a lot that you said that, you know. So thank you very much. Yeah. And and I you know, I, I I see you as family, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that's that's pretty much, you know, the culture that we wanna have within the network. You know, we're all in it for each other because everybody wants to be feeling good. Yeah. You know, that's the ultimate purpose for all. We all wanna feel good, we all wanna love life, enjoy life, mm -hmm. and like you said. You know, life shouldn't be getting in the way. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to go and live it. Yeah. Right? And you're living. You know, you're yeah. living life and, and, you know, much success to you. Um, before we actually finish off, if you can actually just share, like, your information, like, how people can get a hold of you. You know, um, like, say someone's looking, you know, for their realtor, a professional realtor wants to give the best job that she personally can. If you can, just let us know how to get a hold of you. Yeah, so I work, um, I work all over the city. Um, my office is in Woodbridge. Um, I primarily uh, work in the Brampton area. I know Brampton like the back of my head because I've lived there pretty much all of my adult life. Mm -hmm. I've raised my kids there. I've built a home there. Um, I can be reached at um, my cell phone number at 647-407-0275. Um, I encourage people, like, because this really shouldn't be about me, I really encourage people to um, look into this program and even just give it a try for one year. The investment is so small um, and the reward is so big. But invest in yourself because it's not about the investment of that little bit of money. It's the investment uh, that you can put on yourself and give that time to yourself. I know I just sounded like um, I'm selling, but um, <laughs> it's it's life changing for me. It was life changing, and um, I think it could be for any one of you. Okay, thank you very much, Kathy. I appreciate you on Wealth Talk. We're gonna have many more for sure. Many for more, sure. you know, as we grow. Much success in the real estate as well, and even with your son and your sons, mm -hmm. all of them. You know, Zach's on. We'll get the other two on after. You know, sure, for sure. When they're ready, when but they're ready. Uh, yeah, for sure. But no. Thank you very much, and, you know, what you do and what you're about, you know, speaks a lot. You know, just going through this whole Wild Talk and you actually sharing your story, which I didn't fully know the story, and now that I do, it makes a lot of sense to me. You know, um, even all everyone offering you a job and, and all these things, people always extending themselves to you. It's because of who you are. You know, your personality, it, it really, it, it, it brightens. It brightens the room. It brightens everywhere. Like, you have that 
you know, like you just draw people towards you, you know. And, you know, I thank you for being you. I appreciate you. And God bless, you know. This thank is Walk you. Talk. You know, and that's that's it for today, but we will have many more. For sure, for, for sure. sure. Thank you, Richard. All I right. appreciate it. All right. Good stuff, good stuff. All right.